Hello everyone and welcome to the Peugeot Land Trek, a mid-size pickup truck that scores on its curb appeal and it's for urban users who are looking for a vehicle that is for daily commute, for business and also an occasional off-roading purposes. So in today's video, we're going to be finding out everything in detail about this Peugeot Land Trek. So this Peugeot Land Trek is a joint development project between Peugeot and Shangan Automobiles and Shangan actually sells this very same pickup truck under the name Kaishin and you can find it on the internet and yeah, you would come across this very similar looking pickup truck and in this Middle East part this pickup truck is offered in two different variants actually four different variants so you get a manual transmission and automatic transmission so the manual transmission is offered in rear wheel drive and four wheel drive and the automatic version is offered in rear wheel drive and again four wheel drive option and the one that i'm reviewing is the automatic four wheel drive version so let's start off from the front so you get this plastic grill out here with this chrome surround around this grill and this huge Peugeot badge in here with the Peugeot mention on this chrome and there's also this silver color skid plate that has been given around this plastic bumper and the approaching angle on this pickup truck is 29 degrees and there are also these DRS which are given out here so they are in this sort of fashion out here and these are the LED DRLs that you get there is also this fog light around which houses this plastic trim and a dash of chrome that has been given and there are also points which are given your towing points so in case someone gets struck you can help them out by pulling them from there and the fog lamps are halogen fog lamps that you get and when you come to this headlight cluster this is an LED headlight cluster and it's actually a mixture of LED and halogen so the turn signals are halogen whereas the main cluster is LED overall the size of the truck is pretty roundish that way and it's also pretty broad in that sense so it essentially gives you a lot of interior space now on the sides you get 17 inch steel rims with these Goodyear Wrangler all-terrain adventure tires and there are also these side mirrors which are chromed and at the bottom it's normal plastic and then there is also this LED turn signal that has been given and these side mirrors are power foldable they are also power adjustable but they don't have the blind spot warning or anything there's also this half chrome that is given at the bottom and then this sort of weird plastic trim in normal plastic that has been given there is also this sideboard so in case yeah you wanna yeah hop inside the vehicle or you wanna just travel us no you can't do that yeah so in case you want to do that there is also this fixed one that has been given in normal plastic and there are also these roof rails in silver color there is also this chrome door handle and when you come to these door handles these are the keyless entry doors but only the front ones not the back and the pickup bed in the back and you get the leaf springs in the back and I'm going to come to that when we go for a drive and the suspension setup and as I mentioned this is a four wheel drive version and in terms of the height of this thing it's got a 235 millimeters ground clearance and it's also got a 600 millimeters wading depth there are also these steel roll bars so in case the, the pickup truck topples I don't know why that will happen but if it does then yeah, your body is safe but there's also another purpose and it's to make the structural rigidity for this so in case there's a bit of a torsion in the back so it helps you know not the twisty effect to curve that but again on the sides when you see it's a very rounded pickup truck in that sense there are only few lines shoulder lines out here that go or even in the back but that is about it now out here in the back you get a mixture of led and halogen tail light cluster so there are these signature lights and then the turn signals and the reversing lights are all halogen then this land track badging in chrome the Peugeot badging big one out here in chrome with this door handle to open the door for the cargo that's also in chrome there are these bits on the bumper which is in chrome I don't know if it's a wise choice because this thing is going to be scratched around a lot and on top of that you have the plastic bumper and in terms of the departure angles it's around 26 degrees for this land trek and there is also this camera reversing camera that has been given and in terms of the spare wheel it has been mounted underneath the floor and there's also this exhaustive which is 
behind the bumper. Now, in terms of the space on this pickup truck, in order to open the door, it's pretty obvious there's this handle that has been given, but you have to be very careful because there's no dampening or anything. There are just straightforward linkages and whoops. Yeah, you see that? So you have to be very careful because they are just like it just drops dead out here. And then this whole cargo space is covered in this sort of material that is a little bit grippy. It can actually take a lot of weight, this thing. So yeah, that's what you want from the pickup truck. But the thing is that when this door is closed, there's a bit of a gap between the floor of this cargo and the door. That's the only thing. There are also tying points which are given inside this truck. There's also a Peugeot badging inside. And here's another feature that you get. So let me go inside. You get this brake lights and also cargo lights. These are LED cargo lights that you can switch off from inside the cabin and then the button is straightforward just on and off and in terms of the visibility it's actually very good because look at this it's such a big broad window that you get and you can easily look through without any fuss and in terms of the loading capacity you can put about one ton on this land track and in terms of the towing capacity it's around 2.5 tons for the automatic whereas for the manual it's three tons so yeah that's also pretty decent and it's a fairly simple cargo space setup that you get a bit of arches in here and in terms of the space that i mentioned i don't know in liters but it's pretty huge if i sit here in diagonal fashion there is still a lot of space here and there are leaf springs in here so yeah it's gonna be pretty tough in that sense yeah to carry around the cargo yeah i don't know why i'm jumping but yeah let's jump on the inside and check out the interiors so this peugeot land track is a budget pickup and which is why you would find some of the features that are cut back or material quality is yeah somewhat normal and hey you get what you pay for but it's still not too bad i would say but let me start off with the material quality here so you get this plastic dashboard out here this is plastic the door cards are all plastic everything door handle all of that is plastic even this handle we're going to be resting hand that's just soft material even out here there is plastic 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 this guessed it plastic so yeah pretty much everything is plastic this steering is leather cover in between again there is plastic but yeah it's more for durability purposes which is why it's all being given plastic but yeah something soft bits would have been nicer so in case you bang your head somewhere and you know it's not gonna hurt you there are these silver color plastic trims surrounds around these air conditioning controls buttons and switches which are again in silver color that are given this infotainment screen i'm going to come to that and then the driver's display but yeah overall quality is somewhat all right there is this leather covered gear stick and then this knob for putting the car into two wheel drive four wheel drive or four load that's completely in plastic there are more buttons and switches again in plastic so yeah overall it's it's made more out of plastic and as i said it's it's a budget and it's more for daily use which is why it's been given in that and when you come to the driver's display you get a three inch digital driver's display in the center and then there are dials on both the sides for one side shows you the rpm the other side on the left is your speedometer and the thing is is the speedometer and the rpm counter isn't the circular one but somewhat in sort of a weird shape and that makes reading a bit difficult and not just that even the fonts are not too legible that's the only thing and yeah I've especially just not been able to figure out what my speed is sometimes and because of the way it's been designed the cluster so i'm always referred to the screen in the middle so that screen in the middle shows you a bit of different sort of information so you get to see your speed and if you're in the cruise control mode or the limiter then it shows you that also with that option and when you go down you see your short term trip your long term trip then your average speed your tire information then come back to the speed and then you press this button on the side on the right side the button is given then you see your vehicle status your settings for your brightness volume language and the unit setting and that's about it that's plain and simple how you see that and on the top left corner you will also see your drive mode you are in so you get three different driving modes which is your sport 
eco and the normal and the buttons are given out here next to the gear stick so that's also pretty easy there's no special off-road mode in that sense there's also just this dial that has been given to put it into 4x4 or 2x4 mode that's about it and the low mode and then there is also this button to lock your rear differential so that's about it that's all the off-road bits that you get on this land track and yeah this driver's display is pretty much straightforward when you come to this steering wheel this is a leather covered steering wheel with the Peugeot badging in the center and it's a flat bottom steering wheel with double spokes and the steering wheel is also adjustable which is only your which is your tilt and the telescopic so you can adjust both it's a bit hard and what's even more hard is the way to lock it because yeah let me just the clip is i hurt myself twice doing that it's yeah it's that hard to put this in place so yeah finally i've done that i've severed my time so yeah that's the thing and on the right side you would find the controls for your media control and also the driver's display and everything and the communication controls and on the left side you would find the controls for your standard cruise control and the speed limiter that has been given the feel on those buttons and everything is pretty good now when you come to the air conditioning controls straightforward dials and buttons are given for the air conditioning so you get dual zone air conditioning system on this land track and the operation is pretty simple there's an on and off button and then in the middle there is the buttons for your fan speed on either side there are dials given to adjust your temperature and then you can put it into dual zone and you can adjust the temperature or you can come out of it and the temperature and the speed and the flow of air and everything is shown on top of this infotainment screen so you can always see what's the temperature and what's the fan speed and everything and that's always fixed and stays there and a lot of you have asked me that if i can even you know comment on how the cooling is and that's actually a valid point that everyone's making so in terms of the cooling effect it's decent i would say although it's not the best that you know if you sit and immediately it would just start cooling so yeah it takes a little while to cool in that sense but yes the fan speed is pretty good so let me put the yeah the blowers are pretty loud in that case but it does cool eventually but once it's cool it's really nice and there are also two rear vents which are given for the rear passengers so again that's an added cooling effect that you get there are also air conditioning vents given out here and two on the either sides and as i said there are more buttons which are given underneath the air conditioning controls for your differential lock the hill descent control traction control the lock button and also the parking emergency parking button lights and there is also this volume knob which is given there's also this another button which is your camera button so when you press that it shows you the right side of the feed is something like the honda lane watch and not just that when you are taking a right turn and if you give a signal and if your speed is below 30 kilometers it will show you that feed on your screen automatically you can switch it on and off at any point of time then you have this infotainment screen now this is a 10 inch infotainment screen and the operating system is picked up directly from the Peugeot 5008 and it's pretty straightforward and I like the simplicity and how it functions so you can change the different views on this infotainment screen by pressing this button on the left side and then you go to customize and then you have the classic sports or technology you go to the sports display when you come out so the display is yeah much more sportier in that sense or you can change it to let's say what's the other one the technology one so once you go that again there's a different sort of arrangement of these icons so but i prefer the classic one because all your icons are always in front of you and you don't have to work around a lot and the widgets basically that you see on this infotainment screen are your android auto your music player radio and the phone option so in terms of the connectivity you can connect to this infotainment system using the android auto there's apple carplay which is both the wired versions there is also the bluetooth and there is also the usb option that has been provided and not just that you can even adjust these icons by long pressing and you can arrange them wherever you want them to be so you can arrange the order in that sense then once we continue there's also the system settings where you can see your bluetooth the customizing of the theme out here you can change the wallpaper and everything system updates 
factory restored then the next option is your vehicle settings where you will see your body settings doors and everything light settings for the guide home lights the direction control the ac settings if you want to go to the factory settings then there is the files option so this land track also comes with an internal storage of 10 gb so you can store anything on the system itself by using this usb port and you can store things on it which is pretty cool actually because then you don't have to worry about storing later on anything or connecting your phone or anything then there is the mirror link option and the apple carplay again you can arrange all these icons then there is also the drop down option on top where you can see your media volume and the brightness and everything so that's about it your infotainment screen and it's pretty straightforward and easy to use and that's how it should be and it's just that it's slightly laggy on some occasions because there's a bit of a graphics that is going on on my, or when it just starts up for the first time that's the only thing but whatever is given it's i'm pretty satisfied with what has been given on this thing now when you come to the charging you get two usb standard ports which are given out here underneath the air conditioning control one is for charging and one is for the connectivity that also charges there's also 112 volt power socket that has been given underneath this hand rest and there is also one standard usb port which is given for the rear passenger now on this land track you don't get any sunroof or anything but in terms of the storage you get ample of that so in the door cards you can easily put like one and a half liter water bottle and some more storage on the side and those are like the deeper storages that you get there's also this another storage underneath these buttons where you can store your phones and wallets there is also this non-flexible cup holder so yeah it's gonna dangle around a little bit whatever you put so make sure it's tight and there's also this glove box which is decently big even on the passenger side again same one and a half liter water bottle this hand rest in which you can easily put like four half a liter worth of bottle and some more storage that you can still utilize again that is also leather covered and soft material so whenever you rest your hands it's easier and for the rear passengers in the rear door cards you can again easily put like one and a half liter worth of bottle and some more storage on the sides and there are also two standard cup holders which are given in the center armrest now on this land track you also get this manual handbrake and not just that there's also this sunglass holder which you get which is as i said in previous videos also it's kind of fading away in pretty much every car but on this one it has been given in terms of this driving stick it's pretty straightforward so you just put it into reverse neutral drive and you put it on the right side and can take the manual control although there are no paddle shifters so you have to use this stick itself to put it into gears there are just six gears so it's not going to be that difficult now in terms of the music system you get six speakers on this land track two are in this pillar in the front and two more speakers in both the door cards in the front and also in the back you also get these grab handles given for the driver passenger and even on both the sides in the rear so when you go off-roading like oh, you can just yeah grab onto these while yeah the driver goes nuts there are also two more cup holders the one which is cleverly hidden away on the left side near the driver so yeah that's again plastic but yeah that just goes away and covers up and there's one more normal cup holder which is given on this dashboard but again i doubt that you will be using because if you put a drink and if there's a sudden breaking or anything drinks might spill over so yeah i i wouldn't put longer taller glasses or anything just the shorter ones would be fine now when you come to these seats these are a mixture of leather and fabric seats and i'm actually glad that the center bit is in fabric and the design and quality of it is pretty good there's also white stitching on it and these seats are super comfortable again thanks to the fabric material and because it's summer i am so glad when i came back into this car in the afternoon this seat wasn't that hot otherwise it's literally toasted bottoms all the time when there are leather seats so on this thing that's not gonna happen and the best bit about these seats are these headrest because they are super squeegee and soft like yeah you really like to rest your head against them and in terms of the overall fitment the seats are rather nicer they are pretty broad that way so the side support is decent even at the bottom there's not much of the side support that way because they are broad but yeah they still do give you 
ample of comfortable settings when you are going on a longer runs and these seats are manually adjustable completely both the driver and the passenger side seats Now in the rear, the driver side seat is in my driving position and as you can see the knee room is decent I would say there's a bit of a curvature on these seats so that gives it an extra bit of knee room and the headroom is also pretty decent somewhere about 6 feet will be able to sit in here quite comfortably. The only thing is that the seats I feel are a little on the lower side which is what you can make out from the angle that my legs are making there's not much of under tight support for my legs that way and in terms of the material quality you get the same fabric and leather mixture out here and this white stitching it just in the middle bit there's leather and you can not slide your legs underneath the seat that's the only problem during the longer journey so you're pretty much sat like this out here throughout your journey and there's only small bit of tunnel out here and there are no carpets or anything but there are more rubber sort of carpets that you get out here for better grip because if you're wet or something and your feet basically are wet then yeah that's easier to dry out and once i sit in the middle you know what the middle seat is actually pretty comfortable in that case there's only a bit of a hump in the back that's the only thing but otherwise yeah someone can sit in here because why not i mean pretty much all the seats are nearly identical in that sense and there's also this handrest which has two standard cup holders but the handrest isn't that big or long and once you put the glasses inside i don't know or cups inside i don't know you'll be able to use this handrest so yeah that's a tiny one in that case and in terms of the door quality again that's all plastic that has been given everywhere and just where you're going to be resting hands that's just soft touch material but these windows roll down completely so that's one good feature these grab handles that i mentioned are given in terms of the storage you can easily put one and a half liter water bottle there are also these pocket storages which are given in both the driver and the passenger seat and there is also this one more hook which has a capacity of four kilos so you can use that to hang something on it i don't know your shopping bags there are also two air conditioning vents which are given out here you can just control the flow of air and the direction of air and one more standard usb port that has been given and then one more slot that is given so you can put your phone so that's pretty handy when it comes to charging your phone you can just leave it there but overall it's a bit cramped in the rear seats out here but that you can make out because these doors are slightly smaller once you see them from outside but it's an overall compromise between the space that is given for the passengers inside and also the huge cargo space that you get on this land track so this Peugeot land track is offered in a 2.4 liter four cylinder variable geometric turbocharged engine that produces 210 horsepower and 320 newton meters of torque and this engine is mated to a six speed automatic transmission there is also a manual version but again that's also the same six speed manual option that you get and let me come straight to the engine and the gearbox because it feels a little sluggish in terms of its response when i press the throttle and i get it's a big pickup truck but yeah it's it's a bit noisy also when i try to accelerate and like it's my it takes a little while like like a fair amount of time to just start responding to that throttle even the throttle mapping needs a little bit of an improvement because once i press it takes good two seconds before it starts accelerating and then we come to the gearbox it's kind of always in a hurry to change gears because the moment i just go to let's say 60 it's already in the sixth gear and then when i want to accelerate it just kind of scampering around to search for the gears the right one and then takes a little try before it starts going on to the right gear and anyway, the gearing ratios can be improved but 
again because it's a six speed gearbox it stresses out quite easily and when you go above 120 it's already at 2500 700 rpm so it becomes slightly like a noisy affair and not just that because the gearbox has like just six gears the ratio also isn't particularly that well calibrated but yeah that's what you get because it's, it's kind of a budget pickup but overall in terms of its efficiency so i've been managing to get around seven and a half to eight kilometers per liter on a long runs and on a sh shorter runs or inside the city i'm getting anywhere between six to seven kilometers per liter whereas the claim is around ten and a half so i've tried doing multiple ways to get more efficiency out of it but it still just manages to stick around that figure and this is somewhere around 100 to 120 kilometers on an average speed per, per kilometers per hour on an average speed in terms of the drive you get a four wheel drive on this thing and it's predominantly a rear wheel drive until you engage the 4x4 so it's more 4x2 most of the times and that will give you the maximum fuel efficiency when you switch to 4x4 when you have off-roading duties and in terms of the off-roading it's kind of all right i would say a little while off the camera i tried doing a bit of off-roading and then started getting a little nervous and so did i start to get a little nervous so i just stopped because i'm all alone and i don't want to get stuck in here but i mean if the surface is loose gravel or mud or rock i think it will be able to do quite well but on sand it was kind of struggling a little bit and also this has an all-terrain tire and that makes the grip level slightly tricky too on the roads and it's kind of slipping around a bit and that's what you get with the all-terrain tires also which is why but yeah hopefully for off-roading these tires should be better off and when it comes to the suspensions so you get two independent suspension in the front double wishbone suspension in the front and two leaf springs in the back so on the either side of course and let me first show you by doing a slide it has a bit of a roll Ooh, such a heavy truck so yeah it's shifting its weight well but i can feel the hardness in the back because of the leaf spring and the softness in the front not just that because there's the bed in the back it's kind of flopping around when it's empty and that's not a very pleasant experience when you're driving and i don't know if you're making out from the video everything is the steering itself is pretty rattling and then the whole setup is kind of rattling too because of that light bed in the back so if you put a little bit of weight on it the whole dynamics will definitely change a little bit and the thing would start gripping a lot more and it will become much more stable because otherwise i feel the grip in the back is slightly loose especially when i'm accelerating there's also a bit of clunkiness in the gear so it just suddenly sends the power and then the wheels start slipping and then it gets the traction so yeah that's the thing about that bed and as i said you can put about one ton on that and it's got a towing capacity of two and a half tons on the automatic whereas in the manual it's got three ton towing capacity which isn't bad now when it comes to the brakes you get two disc brakes in the front and two drums in the back so in terms of the braking performance let me do a hundred to zero emergency brake stop emergency stop signals that come in and then go away once your vehicle stops and yeah because there are disc brakes in the front so it grips quite well in the front and then the vehicle sort of squats in the front and then the back ones again again the problem is same you start losing grips in the rear tires again it was a light bed and now because it's squatting it just takes the weight off that rear chassis so the brake pedal is all right i would say it's not too bad it's progressive it's decent initially there's a bit of a dead zone but once it starts braking it's it's really good that way and also there is a differential lock for the rear so when you need a proper traction and you want the traction control to kick in because there's a traction button that you can switch off but 
yeah there is a differential lock that has been given out here on this one too now when you come to the steering wheel the steering is a bit too fuzzy i find and it's not just that there is a lot of vibrations that i can feel through the steering wheel itself is kind of rattling around um let me show you on a straight but when i turn in again most of the grip is to be blamed because of these tires which is why and uh, on a slower corners it it's decently turning well and let me go a little faster it takes a little while yes yeah, so now if you see it's it's kind of jittery a bit so that's the only thing it's it's pointy but again this is a big vehicle so you cannot expect it to have like sharp responses in that sense it's got good amount of control that you get but yes there is still a bit of feedback that is lacking from this setup and in terms of the turning radius it's decently small and i'm surprised by that and also it's pretty light the steering wheel it's not very heavy that you're driving a pickup truck and it would make you feel like that even when you're driving this truck actually you don't feel like you're driving a very massive one because the dimensions are much like your regular SUV-ish kind and most of the times i've forgotten that i have a bed in the back it's it's that sort of small and sort of nimble i don't know if you say that for a pickup but yes it is now when you come to the noise and the vibrations the noise yes because the engine stress is out at higher speeds that's when you start hearing some noises also you do hear some wind whooshing around these windows but overall it's it's a fairly quiet cabin on a regular day so if you don't stress out this engine let me just cruise quietly it's a quiet space there's just as i said bit of whooshing in here so that's about it and in terms of the big quality it's rather good everything is pretty much plastic so it's going to last for a long long time now when it comes to the safety systems you get six airbags two for the front driver and the passenger two side airbags again for the driver and the passenger there are also two curtain airbags which are given there is also a single camera reversing system there is also one camera which when you turn around as i mentioned you can use that so the reversing camera is kind of grainy dark and it lacks the frame rates also and i don't know it's not too bright i tried changing the setting but it's not to that level but anyways you still get a camera so you can look in the back what's happening especially for this long truck there are also child isofix points in both the rear seats there is also abs there is also emergency stop signal as i demonstrated and the regular safety systems that you get there's also the parking sensors in the front and also in the rear that you get so yeah in terms of safety it's pretty good i would say now when you come to the pricing so the base variant starts from 80000 dirhams and the top variant i actually don't have the idea but i'm guessing should be around 9000 the automatic 4x4 and when you put into perspective the different options that you get in the market compared to the the GWM the the haval the so many different options that you get these days in terms of the pickup options the reasonably priced budget ones it kind of fits in there it's it's got everything it's it's a pickup that as i started out if you're an urban commuter if you want to use it for your daily driving this is going to offer you that and a light bit of off roading over weekend if you want to go and do some things you could do that also and you have a business where you have to take a lot of sort of luggage and utilize that bed then this is the pick up for you because honestly it is decently comfortable it's not too bad it's got the tech your android auto apple carplay all of that latest things in here so not much to complain about in that department yes the gearbox can be improved the engine can be improved a little bit because the power specially comes in at a really high rpm which is around 5600 rpm the maximum power so you can sense that you know how noisy things will get if you are trying to reach 
beyond 120 or above 140 or something because yes we do have 140 kilometer roads out here too that's pretty much it for this video give this video a thumbs up thank you for watching this video and if you want to subscribe to my channel then you can click here should because 90 percent of you don't subscribe and 10 percent are subscribed so you have to increase that percentage let's do that and if you want to watch more videos then click here i shall see you in the next video bye bye take care and stay safe